Hello, this is Jordan Holt, and today I'm looking at the Mad Max poster coming out May 15th. Um, it caught my eye, and that's the reason I wanted to do a, a once-over of the poster. It's got kind of an interesting look to it, as well as interesting color palette, really, is the thing that jumps out most. Uh, but like most movie posters, there's always these little telltale signs that this was done really, really quickly. And that comes up in a couple of different ways that I will point out. Uh, for one thing, it's a ripoff. Uh, the poster itself is a ripoff of a concept from another movie poster, which this is extremely common. But it's actually a direct ripoff of a poster from The Hobbit. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Uh, what this is doing, more or less, is d doing what's called acknowledging the midline. So in the poster, compositionally, everything focuses on a midline that runs vertically from top to bottom. That means the text is focused around it. That means that the imagery and the focal point right here is fo focused around it. And then it actually travels all the way up to the top. And this text at the top also responds to that midline. So everything is focused around this split halfway between. Like if I pull over a guide, you can see everything follows this midline up the middle. So if I show you a image from The Hobbit, which is roughly the same, uh, you'll be able to see a lot of significant things that carry over, one of which being, again, midline right here. We have the small figure up front. We have the dragon, which is also a secondary focal point, something that our eye is drawn to next. Right here, and then of course our figure here, and then you can see the text even balances the same way. There's even a, a rather interesting note of, you see how the dragon's tail covers up part of the text here? If we jump back over to the Mad Max, you can see how the tops of these people cover up the text just a little bit on the top so it's a it's a pretty straightaway ripoff we're even getting a similar color palette in general as what you see from the hobbit with a little bit more intensity in the green and the teal uh, which comes across pretty clearly in here uh, looking at this one though as far as detail if we throw aside the fact that of course it's a ripoff of another movie poster which again is is extremely common instead if we go in and look at the detail you can see some of the areas where this was done really really quickly and as a result, there's some inconsistencies. For example, if we look back here with our people standing on top of speakers, you'll notice this guy, for example. And if I look really closely, you can see the speaker behind him is clearly behind his shoulder. Easy to see. He's a silhouette and it's not, so that's an inconsistency between those two. It would actually be much better if that was turned into a silhouette so that it would match the look all the way back. And I see that problem all over. It honestly looks like they went into Google Images and just started pulling down speakers and plugging them in. Because of that, there's inconsistency in shadows within them. For example, we see a kind of a, a rather weird shadow on this one which maybe I could reconcile if I looked over everything but it just it feels a little bit odd this one seems consistent with it some of these others do not it becomes difficult to read down at the bottom this was one of them that really jumped out at me if I look down on this edge you can see they did something rather clever which whenever you're compositing photos together the most difficult place when you're bringing objects in and placing them on a ground plane is making it look natural as it touches the ground because that gravity the natural shadows that occur are difficult to duplicate so you'll see this trick used a lot when something happens quickly we're just going to cover up the bottoms of the cars and the feet with a ground plane and with general dust and that's going to keep them from having to show the feet, which can become really, really uncomfortable and difficult to deal with. Again, fast turnaround time, they're going to do this as quickly as they can. However, as I don't think they fully flesh this out over here because this car is carving through the dust like snow. It actually seems to be sunk down inside. And we've got these little pieces right here that really could have used some of this smoke to help cover up this transition. This does not look natural. And again, a leftover of being done as fast as it possibly can. The last thing, really as far as the composite goes, is the color moving up on the dust. Now, we have this bluish color in the background. We have this orange color in the background. This is something you actually see quite a bit of in nature. For example, if I bring up this photo 
you can see similar colors so it does match something as according to what you would typically see in nature but it's a little bit different one of the ways that is different is you can see the suns here and it's touching the clouds anything that is green is just there's nothing to be hit by the sun so the change in color results from the light source and then the distance from the light source that the solid piece is which in this case would be a cloud or in the case of the Mad Max poster poster dust so if we look at this and the light source is coming from down here in fact we're getting a big focus of that orange light here we should see some of this orange sprinkled on the edges of some of these clouds and that would give this it has right now an unnatural gradient where it just suddenly transitioned from orange to green from warm to cool and because of that it doesn't feel very natural if they were to include some highlights along the edges of the clouds that would probably fix the issue the last thing in terms of the composition of the poster in general that I'll mention is boring text we have this this way human beings do <laughs> poster designers do of defaulting to center aligned text so all the time on movie posters in particular you will see this used uh, it's where the text is going to be centered up no matter what even though it would be more interesting in many cases if it wasn't uh, for example since this is acknowledging the midline what if the text was balanced from one side to the other because I like this tagline up at the top in the difference in color could probably use an opacity drop or something but move it over to this side take the title down here and move it over to this side and you've broken this up into quadrants in an interesting way of course you would need some additional imagery of some kind to fill down here rather than just empty ground space but what you get from center aligning text is something that's boring it needs to be a little bit more interesting so even if they're going to do exactly what they've done here rip off the hobbit and acknowledge the midline with a very similar setup similar color scheme everything find a way to make it a little bit more interesting uh, as far as grading this one I would originally probably start here especially considering how posters are I like the look of this one it's really kind of ominous uh, it does have some nice aspects to it being put together even if it's a little sloppy here and there I would probably give it a solid B minus but because of plagiarism I'm afraid I have to drop it to a D